Welcome to a new Webflow tutorial here on this Formwork channel. Every now and then I still use the native Webflow tabs component. Unfortunately, there is currently no direct way to trigger a GSAP interaction when switching tabs like Webflow used to provide with the old interactions. But there's a small workaround I would like to show you today, which actually works just as well. As always, you can clone the project for free into your own Webflow dashboard. You will find the link in the video description. And give this video a thumbs up if you want to see more GZIP tutorials here on this channel in the future. I have already integrated the native Webflow tabs component here in my section. And normally the navigation is here on the top, but we can set the tabs wrapper element to be flexbox vertically then set the tab menu to be the order of uh, the last. So it's getting at the end of our content. And to make the background a little bit more interesting, I integrated a diff element background half. And when we make this visible, you see it's a slightly a brighter background color here. And then we can also integrate a shine, which is using a radial gradient from a color to be a trans transparent. And this one is set to be position absolute. So it's filling all the tabs area. And this gives, gives the whole section a little bit more depth. Then we go into the tabs content. And here we have the tab content item. And this one is set to be height of 70 VH, but it has a maximum, maximum height of um, 60 rem. So it doesn't go too large. And we can see the navigation here at the end. Inside of the tab content item, I integrate a div element tool tab item. And here we use a left, right and bottom padding and give it a height of 100% and set it to position relative. And inside I integrate our tool name text block element. And this one is set to be position absolute. And it's positioned by the wrapper element here with the flexbox settings. So we can set it to the center, to the bottom or the top. And this text element has a font size with a clamp value. So it's a minimum of 1.5 rem. Then I prefer to be 80 VW, but it doesn't go above 13 rem. And of course you can play around with the font size here. And then you see that I set the breaking to be normal and then set the line to be no rep. Uh, so if we integrate a longer text, then it doesn't go into the next line. And this is what I want here for my layout. If we change the background name later, then it's just like a style element behind the image. And then we can integrate a diff a content inner element here, which holds the image itself and also a little shadow here at the bottom to give it a little bit more realism. And in this case, I just integrated a diff element, set this one to be position absolute, give the dark a background color and then use a filter with a blur. If I delete a blur here, you can see it's just a normal dark diff with rounded corners. And the shadow itself should adapt to the size of the content image. So if I change the maximum height of the image here, the shadow is also getting smaller or larger. And this is a pretty nice trick. You can set the image itself here to be fit contain and then use the image wrapper element and don't give it a certain width. So just leave it auto and then you can set the content inner element to be flexbox vertically. And if I delete this display setting here, you can see that the image or that the image wrapper element is now automatically filling the full width of this content inner element. And if I set this one to flexbox, then it's grabbing the content size and bringing it to the center. And therefore, if I change the image here, you can see that the shadow is also getting uh, smaller or a little bit thicker depending on the size of the content. And this is what we want. We can now make a component out of this tab element, give it a name. And inside of this component, we can connect the text element to a new property. And also the image itself should connect it to an image property and the uh, alt text here can be also connected to the text behind the image. Then I paste in the same component in every tab. And for the second tab, we change the text here to maybe energy and then give it a whole other image here, which is I think the energy box here. And the third one here gets the dome. And we also have an example image here. 
And the communication relay is, I think, this one. And then also use maybe a relay for the background. If you want to dive deeper into expert techniques, I recommend my Webflow Expert course. Here's a little snippet of what you can learn in one of the modules. To round things off, we will build a small shop system, including a custom card, and this is entirely from scratch in Webflow, with no need for standard Webflow e-commerce or anything else. We will integrate a FinSuite Attributes filter system, we use AI to generate custom functionalities, and we manage all products easily with the Webflow CMS. And the card is sent to Stripe via a make automation and you get a seamless Stripe checkout page in return. And this gives your clients a lean and flexible selling system ready to go live. Let's start with the animation itself and therefore I go into the component and then we start with the bounce effect of the tool and the shadow. So we can grab the tool content inner, which is the blue box here around, go to the interactions and then the GSAP um, interactions and then we use a scroll. So when this element scrolls into view, then the image itself is bouncing up and down. And inside of this scroll trigger, we want to trigger an action, but it should start a little bit earlier and end when the viewport is minus 20%. So it's starting to be animated before it's coming into the viewport. And that's important. We leave the controls here at uh, enter to just play. Then I select the image at a new action by double clicking the timeline. I name this one image and for the target, I use class and it's integrating the tab content image class automatically and then we want to animate not the opacity um, but the y and x and the x direction maybe minus two uh, percent and the y minus three percent so it's going a little bit up and then also rotate the element here where is rotate here by minus three and it should go from here to maybe three maybe four percent and also free and because this one should be a looping animation we can set this one to be infinite and also going backwards after the animation is done so it's going down and then also going up again and for the easing i like to set this one to be in a power one in and out so let's have a look how this is feeling it's looking good but you see that the shadow itself isn't moving so we can also grab the shadow wrapper element here make a double click in the timeline also give this one maybe the same timing we name this one shadow and then we want just the opacity to go from maybe 60 to where it is in the layout so we can toggle this one off then we can scale it maybe from 0.8 to uh, 1 and we can see that we forgot to change the target element because this one should be the shadow wrapper so we can change this to class all matching elements and now if it's going up the shadow is getting smaller and we reduce the opacity and when it's going closer to the ground the shadow is getting a little bit stronger and this is already looking pretty cool but we just have the standard fade in and out tab animation and i first tried to give also the tab content item a scroll into view um, GSAP animation and when this one or the whole tab here is into the, in the viewport then we can trigger an animation and I think in the background Webflow is using a display um, block and display none of, to hide certain tab content and in the Chrome browser this is also triggering an animation but I had some problems in Safari so I changed the animation type from scroll into view to a click animation and that means every time we click on a menu link we want to trigger the same animation and when we go into the settings of the tab component we see that we have an ease out animation here and we fade out the content in 300 milliseconds and this is the same time we now can use in the gsap animation to scale out our image so let's go to a menu link here maybe don't use the current one another one here and then we use a click element here and then we go into our component again and then choose the content inner element make a double click here on the timeline and use this one as a class target and that means that every content inner element in every single tab is animating maybe from one to 
0.7. So it's scaling down the image itself and also the shadow. And now we can use the same timing here for the tap fade out effect here as a duration. And then we also want the name in the background to scale down a bit together with the image. So we can target this one at the same time. So let's click the tool name here and then use the target here class as well, all matching elements. So both of them are scaling down. I name this one scale out and maybe just in case also use um, a fade out here on the uh, content itself. So it's going from 100% to zero. And then the actual tab animation of the new tab is starting. So we can call this one scale in. And in this case, we use the scale from 0.7 to one, maybe an expo out, but this easing needs a little bit more time. Maybe we can increase this to one second. And then of course, we also want to fade in this element. And therefore I use um, another action step just for the opacity because this should go faster. So it's going from zero to 100. And we can use an power one in out effect here, but this should take maybe just um, yeah, 0.2 seconds. And then we see that the element is scaling in again, but the fade in is a little bit faster. And then we also want the name in the background to have a staggering animation. So we can grab the tool name here, make a double click to create a new action step. We can call this one name. It should start together with the scale in. And as a target, we use the class elements or the tool name. This one can take maybe 0.8 seconds, also with an expo out effect. And then we can stagger with an offset time of maybe 50 milliseconds and split the text by a letter and also making a mask of the letter itself. And then it should go from um, in the Y direction 100% to where it is styled in the Webflow Designer. When we have a look at the live preview, we see that the stagger effect is working fine, but the name is going away instantly. So it's no, not uh, scaling down like the, the image itself. Maybe it has some conflict with the stagger effect and the scale, but it looks okay to me. So we can move on to the next step because as you can see, if I click one of the last tabs here, it takes a really long time until the name is coming up. And the reason is that right now, I have set the stagger effect to the name class tool name, all matching elements. So it's looking for all elements with this class and then animating every name in the background of every tab until it's coming to the communication relay tab. And it depends on how many tabs you have here, but this could take a really long time and it's not good for the overall effect. So maybe you have a solution how to use the stagger effect here on every tab element at the same time. I haven't found a solution for that problem yet, but just kindly yeah, write a comment below the video. But in our case, we can go into the component, go to the tool name and the settings, and then integrate a custom attribute of data tool name, then connect this one to a value data tool name. And then we can use the same name here, like uh, in the background for every component. So this one is energy, this one is the dome. We can change the name animation here to be a specific one, to be um, an attribute target of a data tool name. So this one was energy. Then it's using the stagger effect only on the second text element of the tab. And that means we also have to change this one to name energy. Then we can duplicate this one. Maybe bring this one to the top because this one would be the, the lander. So the first tab here, then we can change the attribute here to lander. On the live side, you can see when we scroll into the tabs section that the actual name behind in the background isn't coming up. We first have to click one of the tab elements so we can um, animate it in. And for this problem, we can integrate a little custom JavaScript embed behind or after the tabs element. And inside of this embed, we target the tools ID, which is currently set to the tabs wrapper element here, tools, and then we target uh, the first tab menu link in the navigation here, and we trigger a first 
click or we imitate a click after 500 milliseconds, so after the page is loaded. And on the live side, we can make a page reload and then we see the text is here in the background when we scroll into the section. You can grab the, the free clonable of this project in the video description and then just play around with the animation yourself.